Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill. I'm a fourth generation witch, uh, Irish descent, so I've got everything going for me. Learned all this stuff at my mother's knee. Now today's video is something that people have been asking me for for a couple of months now. And I keep getting comments saying I'd love a banishment spell. Now this got me thinking what you would use a banishment spell for. And then I realized that what I use banishment spells for is for demons. really talked about this with you on YouTube before because you might think I'm as mad as a box of frogs which maybe I am but I'm not insane I'm just you know in tune with my witchy ways but my main strength as a witch is as a demon slayer yes I know Ginny the demon slayer although technically you don't really slay demons you sort of just push them back to where they came from which is not this plane of existence but a different one I mean, other people have huge, powerful healing capabilities or divination. For me, I slay demons. I banish them, exercise them, and ensure they can't return. That's my job. And I'm very good at it. Now, many of you will have experienced demons, many of you without realising it. In fact, probably most of you, they're exceedingly common. And there are two main types of demon, those that can cause you physical harm, and yes, I have experienced those types. And then there are those demons that bear you no physical scars, meaning that their hell is a personal madness that nobody else can understand. And these are the ones that really cause the harm. A lot of mental health illness is exacerbated and caused by demons. You know, demons come in all ranges, sizes. You might get a small one, which just gives you a bit of crossness in the morning, or you might get a major one, which gives you severe mental health illnesses. Or if you're in a Ouija board situation and you're talking to a demon, you might get thrown across the room. That happens. And I want to just talk about very quickly the Ouija board. A Ouija board is a way of summoning demons. You may think you're talking to your grandfather, your best friend, your mother, and you may think that they look like this, or this, or this. However, you're not. You're just summoning a bloody demon. <laughs> Literally every Ouija board session will it be you talking with a demon. So just don't do it. <laughs> I, can't, it's like, I can't stress, I, I can't stress strongly enough how you really don't, just don't, <laughs> don't. Well, unless you want to talk with a demon, and I really don't think you should. <laughs> no good will come of it. It really will, no good will come of it. Don't do it. I, as an exorcist, have spent many years building up an armour against demons. I have so much, and I've done this through trial and error. And let me tell you, the errors that I made when I didn't have those defences up properly, wouldn't, wouldn't, I, I, I was lucky, well, I was lucky, let's just put it that way, I was lucky. You wouldn't go into battle as a soldier with no weaponry or armour. Don't do a Ouija board without me, <laughs> is what I think is what I ask. I hate demons, I don't engage with them at all, I just get rid of them. And that is not what I'm going to show you today because it's too difficult. Now I can't teach you in a 10 minute video how to slay demons, quite frankly it's a lifetime's work. However, I am going to show you a traditional banishment spell. And what we're going to look at today is something called a hagstone. And this is a hagstone. It's a stone with a rather big hole in it. Look at that. Hole all the way through. Hagstones are very traditional witch's equipment. They are normally found in flint. As you can see, this is a piece of flint here. They were considered extremely lucky. Now, before I get into the spell on this hagstone, I appreciate that you probably don't have a hagstone. However, I've got about six, and I thought it'd be really great for my subscribers if you wanted a hagstone, I will send one to you with the Ginny Metherall blessing on it. Obviously, make sure that you're subscribed and you've liked the video. Just leave me a comment below saying, hi, my name's David, and I would like a hagstone, or whatever. And I have several to give away, and I'll get in touch with you, and send them to you. One of the easiest ways to use a hagstone is to look through it in the moonlight and you will see fairies. I've never done that, so I don't know if it's true or works. I suspect it doesn't, but it's quite a lovely superstition, so I thought I'd tell you about it. 
The other great thing that you can do with a hagstone is to write your wish on it. I would write my wish on it in some sort of stone-taking pen and then bury it and then your wish is written in stone and the hagstone will give you the power to make it come true. Now the second thing that we need for the spell is a piece of red cord. Now I've got some pom-pom cord because I like pom-poms uh, for no other reason. I like pom-poms, I think they're cool. Red cord is part of almost every culture from the Aborigines to the Norse to the Chinese to the Aztecs. Red cord is a really powerful tool. Witches would use it of old to, to bind up poppets with it. It was made into bracelets to protect against the evil eye. We're getting into partly colour magic here and it's used very, very significantly throughout the history of the world. The Japanese paint their gates to their temples, the torii, with the red colour as protection against evil. In Tibet, the colour red is strictly saved for the religious communities, so the religious, uh, the temples, the colours of their robes, their gateways and important walls are painted red. The Aboriginal culture had red as a very sacred colour. It was one of the sacred dream colours and if you dreamt of red you were strong, you were a warrior and you defended your people. And this is why we're going to use the red cord. It has a lot of symbolism and it utilises the power of the colour red, which does have magical properties. People may think that colour magic doesn't really work. It does. In the UK, the NHS, our hospitals are all painted this rather foul green or pink, which is a calming colour and helps people calm. And it has been psychologically and physically proven to do so. Don't paint them red anyway, because this is a defensive warrior. Puts you on standby. I'm gonna be there. Now, I've had to just change my cord actually, because I've realised I can't get the cord through the hagstone with the pom-poms in it, so I'm now going to use a ribbon. Now this spell is a spell to banish a hex, a curse, negative energy, ill luck, bad luck, possibly bad habits, but I'm not sure how effective it will be against a bad habit. It will help you a bit but it's generally for that. I can't show you how to banish a demon in a 10 minute YouTube video. It took me 20 years, so I don't think I can show you in 10 minutes. I mean, I could probably do it in 10 minutes. Take your ribbon, work out what you're banishing. Now I want you to tie three knots in your ribbon. The first knot you're going to tie is to bind the issue, whatever the issue is. The second knot is to overpower that issue. And the third knot will be you imagining yourself banishing that issue. You've got three knots in your red ribbon. Take your hagstone and pull the red ribbon three times. Each time you pull it through, think of binding, overpowering and banishing. Finally, tie your ribbon through your hagstone and hang it up. Hang it up wherever you think it gives you the best chance of helping you banish your issue, whatever that issue might be. People in the olden days used to often hang them from the newel post or your bed post only because they thought it gave you great protection because you do tend to astrally project in your dreams and a hagstone will stop anything bad coming your way. Now the best time to do a hagstone spell is on the night of a full moon. So this is perfect for Halloween, this spell, only because as the full moon wanes, it will dissipate the issues that you have required with it. Now for all of those of you who don't get a hagstone in my subscriber giveaway, but do want to do a protection spell, I'm going to give you a quick banishment spell, which only involves salt. I want you to put a line of salt the whole way around your house, your flats, your whatever. Go inside the building. You won't be able to see the line of salt, obviously, but I want you to take your wand and point it at where you think the salt might be. And using your intention, pointing at the salt, do a complete 360 degree circle, turning around as you go. And as you do, I want you to say, I banish everything that may bring me harm from this, my circle. That is it. As long as that salt circle stays in place, which it will do for a few weeks, a couple of months, maybe a bit longer, then you will be free of any demon. 
Any demon that you have picked up will be banished as soon as you walk into that circle. And so it will protect you and your loved ones whilst you live in your home. That spell you can do at any time. It doesn't need to be done in the new moon, it doesn't need to be done at night. It can be done at any time. It's a really simple and very, very old fashioned spell. The Catholic Church used to use a very similar rite at baptism involving salt, where they'd cast salt about to cast out the devil. You're sort of doing the same thing. Anyway, from one demon slayer to the rest of YouTube. If you want the beautiful hackstone, don't forget to message me down below. Make sure you're subscribed and message me down below. And I will see you in my next video.